Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here. Hello. <laughs> Gentlemen, today we review the big one. One of the more anticipated movies of 2017, probably the most anticipated amongst Disney Princess fans and just all around Disney fans alike. The Bill Condon directed live action adaption of the 1991 Best Picture nominated film, I might add, alongside Silence of the Lambs and JFK in 1991, Beauty and the Beast, starring Emma Watson, Dan Stevens, Luke Evans, Josh Gad, Kevin Klein, and on top of these great names, a couple of very famous actors lending voices to CGI characters, including Ewan McGregor, Sir Ian McKellen, Emma Thompson, and even Stanley Tucci. I ask you, how do you improve? upon perfection. Well, you don't. Plain and simple, you don't. I don't know where Disney has come from in regards to taking a whole bunch of animated classics and turning them into live-action adapted films. Now, don't get me wrong. I did enjoy Cinderella, and I was blown away by The Jungle Book. And I can definitely understand, alongside other film names like Alice in Wonderland and even a new take on Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent, that there is definitely stuff that you can do, because while they are memorable, there's definitely room for improvement. But Beauty and the Beast, a grand epic tale with so much amazing gravitas and incredible performances and music and moments in a movie that would make people who have seen movies like Terms of Endearment ball like little girls with skin knees. How can you possibly turn this into a better movie? I will still say that I did not dislike this movie. I did enjoy it because I love the animated classic. The production value of this movie is wonderful. The castle, the town, the costumes, the makeup. It looked like these classic Disney animated characters jumped off of the animation cells and were just brought to life in a beautiful film. There also are the songs. And while there are a couple of twists and turns that they do with the songs, you still get the songs that you know and love as well as a couple of additional new songs, which I will definitely say were very, very well done. There is a wonderful song that is sung close to the end of the film that is just done by Dan Stevens as the Beast, and it's not in the original movie. It is a beautiful song, and a very personal song for the Beast as well. There also are some additional character development points that are brought for Belle and the Beast, because we get to see a little bit into the Beast's past as to why he was cursed, and not just him, like Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts, and their doings are actually included in the whole curse on the castle. There are even some beautiful things for the backstory of Belle, because one of the few things that most Disney classics do not feature is what happened to the dead parent. Most most of the time, it's the mother, and this time around, we see a really wonderfully made piece of cinema to show why Belle's mother is no longer with her and why her father is so protective of her. It's a wonderful spectacle of light, song, sound, and Disney magic. But then there's everything else that I really wanted to love, but just didn't. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, that controversial thing that everybody was up in arms about, whether you were conservative or liberal. No. Honestly, if Disney didn't say anything about LeFou being an openly gay character, apparently Disney's first, then you may not have seen it entirely, or you would have probably guessed there's something a little interesting about LeFou there. But it was so subtle and there was nothing wrong with it. It was absolutely fine. But what I didn't like about LeFou was the fact that he wasn't as fun and as boastful and rambunctiously hilarious as he is in the animated film. He just seemed so dull and so serious and so depressed. I kind of felt bad for him, rather than loving who I refer to as one of the greatest Disney sidekicks of all time. Luke Evans, you can totally tell that he is enjoying playing this character of Gaston. The grandeur, the boastfulness, the self-centeredness ego that is Gaston is beautiful. But 
not the songs. He was so wrong for the octaves and the pitches that were needed for this really deep, grumbling voice that you would have expected from Gaston singing. He really was a couple of octaves too high. The DGI characters are so much fun. I will probably say that one of the best parts of this movie is Ewan McGregor voicing Lumiere. He was such a delight. You could tell that he was having fun. He was funny, even though he wasn't there on screen, only his voice. But I absolutely loved him because he's done movies like this before. And even Ian McKellen and Emma Thompson did a great job as their digital characters as well. And especially when you see Lumiere singing Be Our Guest, that is, without a doubt, one of the highlights of the movie for me. But one of the downsides is, is it just me, or did this film seem very claustrophobic? I mean, when you take a look at this gigantic castle, the epic ballroom dance between Belle and the Beast, didn't it not seem to be in a much smaller room? And when you're hearing and seeing the beautifulness of Be Our Guest, it didn't feel as wide and as epic as it did in the animated film. But I will definitely say that the worst part of this movie is the title characters. Emma Watson as Belle. What did they do to this character? Where is that twinkle in her eye, the innovativeness, the brave, do-it-yourself heroine that I wanted to see? Emma Watson, with her dialogue and her body language and her eye contact, she is now officially Kevin Costner in this movie. She was as flat as a piece of cardboard. And when she sang, the auto-tune was just so awful. She just didn't have the voice for this character's songs, especially when you take a look at the grandeur of her vocal range in the animated film. And Dan Stevens I wanted to love as the Beast, but the CGI on him was awful. And when he and Belle are in the room together, compared to the scenes that he is with the CGI characters, there's so much more to him when Emma Watson is not in the room, because when he is talking to Belle, he is like the three-legged dog that you have to put to sleep. He just doesn't want to be there. I didn't see this chemistry, the way that they fell in love in the animated movie. It just was not there for me because of this acting, and I really feel much like Kevin Costner. Emma Watson just brought everyone else that she in interacted with in her role as Belle down with her, because when they're not with her on screen and not engaging with her character, they're so much better. She was the true sour note of this entire movie for me, and it made me feel horrible about that fact, because I really was anticipating this movie to be, if not as good as the animated counterpart. And for me, it just goes to show us that we really shouldn't be turning these animated classics into live-action adapted films. Parents should be good parents and sitting their kids down in front of the television and showing them the animated classics. People are saying kids won't want to see 2D animated films. I say that that's a load of hogwash. I think that kids will be blown away by animation because unlike live action, animation can create anything the mind of man can conceive. And that was said by Walt Disney himself. And with movies like Aladdin and The Lion King, Dumbo, apparently another Peter Pan, a 101 Dalmatians movie from Cruella DeVille's point of view, and a Winnie the Pooh live-action movie because they can is coming, I seriously believe that I am not going to see these live-action films. Maybe the Mulan, because I was not a fan of the animated film, maybe they can do a little bit better. This is not a movie that I want to see again, and this is not a movie that I want to own on DVD. But I am glad that I at least got a little bit of enjoyment out of this movie, but it's definitely not one of the better movies that I have seen this year, and I will gladly watch the Disney animated classic any day of the week. I am giving Beauty and the Beast two and a half out of four stars. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Put your comments in the box below, and let's have a discussion or a friendly debate about Beauty and the Beast. And I will see you in the next one. 
Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.